Welcome to the Nicholas 11x12 technology. Today I'm going to take a look at the MSI Z97A Gaming 6 motherboard, the world's first with USB 3.1 Type-C connectivity. But there's more to this board than just the new USB standard, we've been waiting for such a long time. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Right now, at the time of this video, this motherboard currently costs around 185 US dollars, which is a good price point for a board like this one. Thanks a lot to MSI for sending me this motherboard and making this review possible. Inside the box we find the nice looking board itself, a very thick user's manual, a quick installation guide and so on. A quick brochure on more MSI products, the driver CD, the nicely padded black and red IO shield, a pair of black SATA cables but come on MSI, why not include a second pair? One SLI bridge the audio boost Molex cable to further improve the onboard audio solution on this board, then we also get MSI's M connectors, a nice case batch, some SATA cable labels and last but not least the traditional door hanger. Alright as always, these MSI gaming motherboards look very similar on first sight, which is not a bad thing at all in my opinion. I quite like the design with its red and black color scheme and in most cases it goes really well with MSI's graphics cards as well, at least when going for their gaming GPUs. The black and yellow color scheme of my GTX 770 doesn't fit that well, but in my opinion that doesn't matter anyways. The layout on the board seems to be done right, as we're used to see from MSI anyways. This motherboard features Intel's current flagship chipset model, Z97, which is being cooled down by this nice aluminum heatsink here. In the CPU socket area are two nice large heatsinks to cool down the VRMs. The Z97 A Gaming 6 makes use of an 8-phase power design with military class 4 components all over the board, which is decent and should allow us to achieve fairly good overclocks. As for the CPU socket, it's LGA 1150, which supports the Haswell, Haswell Refresh as well as the Devil's Canyon CPUs. As always, 4 DDR3 DIMMs with support for dual channel memory with a max capacity of 32GB and frequencies all the way up to very high 3300MHz at OC. As for storage connectivity, we get a total of 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, two of which are reserved for the new single SATA Express port. So if you're using SATA Express, you'd have 4 standard ports left. If you don't use it, 6 are available. All of these ports run off the Intel Z97 chipset. RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 are supported. Also on board is an M.2 port that supports SATA 6 gigabit per second as well as M.2 PCIe modules with up to 10 gigabits per second and module lengths of 4.2, 6 and 8 centimeters. Keep in mind when using the M.2 port the SATA Express or SATA 5 and 6 ports will be unavailable. Now to the expansion slots. There are 3 PCIe 3.0 x16 slots and 4 PCIe 2.0 x1 slots. This board supports 3-way crossfire and 2-way SLI. For a single GPU configuration, install the graphics card into the first slot for x16 operation. For 2-way, use the first and second slot for x8, x8. And for 3-way, obviously use all the 3 slots available for x8, x4, x4 operation. Also, when installing an expansion card into the third X1 slot, the second one above will be unavailable. As with all of these MSI Z97 gaming series boards, the good Realtek ALC 1157.1 audio codec is used, and with MSI's Audio Boost 2 feature, the audio signal gets amplified by 2 amps, and thanks to the high quality NIP and Chemicon filtering capacitors, you get a nice clean filtered signal with the audio components completely isolated from the rest of the board to avoid any kind of interference. To make use of the audio boost feature, connect the included audio boost Molex cable to this header here and flip the switch. In total, this Z97A Gaming 6 board features 5 fan headers, 2 CPU fan headers and 3 system fan headers all across the board. Speaking of headers, here we have the JSPI1 header along with the chassis intrusion header and a debug header. 2 USB 2.0 headers, the 2 front panel headers, a TPM module header, a COM header, also known as serial port, and the front panel HD audio header. On the right we also get two USB 3.0 headers, an angled one and a basic one. Right here, as always, the 24 pin power connection and the 8 pin ATX 12 volt power connection up here. Also on board are voltage checkpoints and a nice debugging LED. After the post process, the CPU temperature is displayed. Once again, excellent high quality components are used all across the board that should give the board a long lifespan. Now let's move on to the back panel. Here's a PS2 combo port, 
two USB 2.0 ports with stable 5 volts, a VGA and DVI as well as an HDMI output, one optical SPDIF output, and finally the amazing USB 3.1 Type-C port running of the Asmedia ASM1142 controller. I gotta tell you, I love that port and let's be honest, everyone has to love it. It offers speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which is twice as much as USB 3.0, which is only able to provide 5 gigabits per second. USB 3.1 will therefore be able to boost the transfer rates of external storage devices, for example, and thanks to the new Type-C connection type, you can blindly connect any device to that port, because no matter how you plug the cable in, you can't do it incorrectly, and besides, it's much much more robust than previous USB ports. Really, that's what we've been waiting for. It's finally here for us to use, and I'm glad MSI implemented this port so quickly. But now back to the rest. We also get two USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit LAN port powered by the killer E2205 controller, and last but not least, the gold-plated 7.1 audio jacks. The Z97A Gaming 6, of course, also comes with MSI's awesome click bias for UEFI bias, which doesn't just look good and all, but also is laid out very well, and has tons of features to offer, one of them being the famous OCG Ne4 automatic overclocking feature. If you aren't an experienced overclocker, or just want to be done in a matter of seconds with the OC, then enable this feature and it will automatically do the job for you and will keep the system stable. However, if you know your way around overclocking, I would of course recommend and doing it all manually. Unfortunately, we don't get to see an onboard OC Genie button, but it's really not a big deal in my opinion. The MSI Z97A Gaming 6 is a very good motherboard. However, in terms of price performance ratio, it's not all that good compared to MSI's very good offers, such as the Z97 Gaming 5 I've also tested. But do not forget we're getting SATA Express here on this board, and most importantly, an USB 3.1 Type C connection. So, indeed, MSI has all the right to increase the price point of this motherboard a little over there popular Z97 Gaming 5. The Gaming 6 definitely is a bit more future-proof. Overall, I didn't experience any issues whatsoever. The system was very stable and overclocking works fairly well too. For instance, I easily managed to overclock my i7-4770K to 4.5GHz with a voltage of 1.251V measured in CPU-Z. Also, with MSI's gaming app and command center utilities, you get some nice software too, with neat little features such as RAM disk, which basically allows you to create a virtual drive from your system memory. That virtual drive is a lot faster than modern SSDs. And by a lot, I really mean a lot. So yeah, as always with MSI's motherboards, I'm impressed. Aesthetically it looks good, build quality is excellent, and the overall experience is fantastic. In the past I've had boards from the competition and from MSI. Although there often isn't that much of a difference anymore these days when it comes to motherboards, MSI's boards were always a bit more reliable than certain models of the competition, judging from my experience of course. So without a doubt I can definitely recommend the MSI Z97A Gaming 6 motherboard. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12tech.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.